So are you a good person? While most people would answer yes to this question. They usually say something like, yeah, I'm not too bad, or I've done a few wrong things, but in general, I'm a pretty good person. But when you press people a little further, and ask them where they get their idea of good from, they're usually a little bit stumped. They often respond that compared to most people in society, they're doing pretty well, or that they're good in relation to how they treat others in society. They always tend to compare themselves with people who are morally far more corrupt than themselves, and they rarely ever compare themselves to the Mother Teresas of this world. And that's pretty commonplace. No one ever wants to think of themselves badly. In fact, the Bible says in Proverbs 20 verse 6, most men will proclaim each his own goodness, but who can find a faithful man? Oh, one second, excuse me. Hi, Nikki. Hi, Paul, what are you up to? Just having a chat about self-righteousness and how most people will declare themselves to be good. Yes, that's my experience too. However, when I take them through the law of God, they suddenly realise just how bad they've been. Can you explain that, Nikki? Yes, God has given humanity 10 basic laws to show us just how sinful we can be. He gave us his law to make us realise that we are incapable of keeping it. And we're incapable of keeping it because sin lives in our heart and we want to constantly rebel against God's righteous standard. For instance, most people would declare that they are good. But when I ask them if they've ever told a lie or if they've ever stolen something or ever looked with lust upon another human being, you suddenly see a shift in their body language. They become very uncomfortable as they are, confronted with the law of God. Because his law states, do not lie, do not steal and do not commit adultery. And that's only three of the Ten Commandments of God's law. When we look into the mirror of God's law, it reflects back to us just how bad we've been. Okay, gotta go now. See you later. Okay, see you, Nikki. You see, the law of God reveals just how dirty or mucky we've become with sin. We often judge other people's muckiness, don't we? We say, stay away from so-and-so because they're a thief. Well, aren't you a thief too? Or stay away from so-and-so because they're a liar. Have you never told a lie? You see, we are all guilty before God because sin lives within us. We are actually incapable of being good because according to God's goodness, goodness is absolute purity. It's not 80% good or 95% good. God demands 100% goodness from you and me. He simply cannot tolerate any sin. He is too holy for that, so we have all blown it. God is a good judge, a perfect judge, a judge who cannot tolerate any sin, a judge who will not turn a blind eye to any sin committed. He will and he must punish every act of sin from the vilest murder to the littlest white lie. Everything is seen by him and everything will be punished by him. And whether we believe that or not, or agree with that or not, it makes absolutely no difference. It's going to happen. Now we have to make a choice. And we can choose either to be punished by God for our sin in a place called hell, a place that Jesus describes in the Bible as outer darkness, where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Or we can repent of sin, turn away from it, and trust in Jesus' death for us on the cross. You see, when Jesus died on the cross, he was doing it for you. He was taking the punishment for your acts of sin upon himself because he loves you. He doesn't want you to be punished for your sin. And that's why he died in your place. He was then buried in the tomb and on the third day, God raised Jesus back to life. And he then appeared to more than 500 eyewitnesses who saw him and spent time with him. Now that choice is yours today. Please choose life. 
Now, can I encourage you to get a Bible and read through the four Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Discover who this Jesus really is. Obey what you read and spend a few minutes every day talking to God, building a relationship with him. You see, it's not about religion. It's all about relationship.